Sadly, the remains of Eliza Fletcher were identified hours ago. This 34-year-old wife and mother of two young children was abducted while on a run in Memphis, Tennessee. As a father myself, I cannot imagine the pain of her husband. The man accused was in jail for 19 years and was released less than two years ago. Everyone deserves a fair trial, so I'm not going to make any claims on his guilt. With that being said, if he is guilty, this is a clear instance of why I support the death penalty. Here's a study that illustrates this. We did a very detailed study of the, four, of the 43 murderers executed in 2012. That was the, uh, the, year, the most recent year we had the data. Right. And we found that uh, about a quarter of them seem to have come around to uh, belief in God or an appreciation of the importance of God and getting right with God mm. before they were executed. Uh, six of them specifically mentioned getting right with Jesus Christ in their final words. Three of them went through Catholic sacraments, uh, confession, <coughs> communion, and, uh, and last rites. And the question is, whether, would any of that have happened had they been sentenced to life without parole? Mm. And there hadn't been that uh, reckoning that they knew was coming. And we think not. We think that the, the empirical evidence is that the death penalty does, in fact, help to save souls. And that yeah. wouldn't have surprised Aquinas and other great teachers in the church, yeah. but I think it would surprise a lot of uh, bishops and others now. And one, one purpose of our book is to present that evidence. My old friend, uh, Cardinal Avery Dulles, the great theologian, who used to argue that this is actually a merciful act. He believed that because you shorten the window and you give an offender a definite time, that it clarifies the mind. And Aquinas, you have it in your book, he says, you know, if, if death can't uh, pull the heart away from evil, well, then what can? As it was mentioned there, there were three people that went to confession before their death. Robert Mormon... Mark Wiles, and Robert Towery, and they also received the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Now you might wonder, all right, if you're Catholic, what about your stance on abortion? There's a crucial difference between innocent life and, and guilty life. And Pope John Paul II himself emphasized this in Evangelium Vitae when he qualified his statement that, uh, about the, uh, the inviability of, of life to, to uh, reference to innocent life. It's when life is innocent that it has this inviolable character. But he doesn't say that all life has an equal status. If someone is guilty of sufficiently grave crimes, then he's merited a penalty of death in just the way that someone who, say, kidnaps someone else has forfeited his own freedom, or someone who has taken someone else's property mm -hmm. has forfeited the right to his own property. So when people talk about a seamless garment and act as if, if you are opposed to abortion and euthanasia, then you have to be opposed to capital punishment as well. That's, that's really kind of a silly argument. It's like saying that if you're opposed to kidnapping, then you also have to be opposed to imprisoning people. Or if you're opposed to, um, mm -hmm. to theft, that you have to be opposed to fines. Well, no one would say that. Everybody realizes that there's a difference between the innocent and the guilty by the very same same principle. Someone guilty of a sufficiently serious crime forfeits his right to life. That's something, in fact, that Pope Pius XII explicitly taught, that the, the person um, guilty of a, a grave crime <clears throat> such as murder has forfeited his own right to his life. Mm. Now you may say, isn't Pope Francis praying this month for an end to the death penalty? Let's hear from a priest and canon lawyer, Father Gerald Murray. The Catholic Church has taught the legitimacy of the death penalty right from the start. He says it's a form of vengeance, it's an offense against human dignity. I don't agree. We need to, I think, look at that again in light of the tradition. Here's another tragic case that was just released today as well. I'm pushing for the death penalty. I'm pushing for the death penalty. Two-year-old Jadica did not survive, and West Memphis's mayor declared no stone would be left unturned in finding the shooters. Today is one of those bittersweet moments where well, we are on the way to finding justice. This is just heartbreaking. Also, I know many of you are thinking, what about those priests that abuse the altar boys? I believe that the death penalty applies to them more than anyone else. They spiritually and emotionally destroyed countless souls, and I have no tolerance for that evil. It is terrible to hear these stories, but it is a reminder that free will exists, and that is why we have to strive to imitate Christ and always combat sin. God love you, and feel free to listen to where the death penalty is in scripture, and more. Uh, Edward, while I have you, uh, before I return to Joseph, <clears throat> run down the scriptural roots of this teaching on capital punishment. <clears throat> I know we, we have a lot of evangelical viewers as well as Catholic viewers who are saying, okay, well, where is this in the scripture? 
it, where isn't it in the scripture? It's, it, we really find uh, th an affirmation of the legitimacy of capital punishment throughout scripture, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. We find it not only in the Mosaic Law, where it's most famously put forward uh, as part of the Law of Moses, but even preceding the Mosaic Law in Genesis uh, chapter 9, verse 6, which gives us the title of our book, uh, you find this remark that, um, that God will require the, the life of a man who takes the life of another. This is where he says, by man shall his blood be shed. So we find a, okay. a divine sanction for capital punishment in um, the book of Genesis, in uh, the New Testament, in Romans chapter 13, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of that chapter, uh, you find St. Paul affirm the right of the state. And, and it's important to keep in mind, by the way, that he was doing this at the time when the Roman Empire was very severely persecuting the church. And he mm -hmm. nevertheless at that time upheld the right of the state to uh, inflict a penalty of death on those guilty of sufficiently grave crimes. And you mm -hmm. find many other passages beside. And, and an important point to add here, is that the church has always taught not only that scripture cannot teach moral error, but also that where the fathers of the church, the earliest theologians and bishops mm -hmm. of the church, where the fathers of the church are agreed on a, a matter of scriptural interpretation, that no Catholic is at liberty to disagree with that interpretation. And the fathers of the church are unanimous, even those who opposed capital punishment in principle, they're unanimous that capital punishment is legitimate uh, sorry, those that oppose capital punishment in practice. They're unanimous uh, in agreeing that capital punishment is legitimate in principle and that scripture itself teaches the legitimacy uh, in principle of capital punishment. So mm -hmm. the, the, the capital punishment is legitimate in principle is, is not something that's open to the church to revise. What were the objectives, the goals of allowing capital punishment to stand. What did the church hope to achieve and does it hope to achieve by permitting this morally? That it deters others from serious crimes, that it promotes, restores the balance of justice, that it promotes the repentance of the offender. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those traditional purposes, someone like Aquinas thought, were very much served by the death penalty. And the church until recently has pretty much accepted the view that the death penalty properly applied may serve the common good and public officials have a responsibility to achieve the common good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our argument is that it still achieves the common good. That's why we <coughs> devote uh, almost half of the book to a discussion of the practical ways in which the death penalty still achieves the common good.